All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is a video for Urban Economics talking about dealing with pollution. And so in the Bruckner book, we've been talking about chapter nine, how to manage pollution. And we're going to have a homework problem, um, exercise 9.1, that looks at managing pollution and dealing with that first and second couple of cases where we've got one or two polluters with a well-defined marginal benefit curve associated with pollution and a marginal damage curve defined by society. And so what I'm going to do is um, in the homework, chapter nine, exercise 9.1 asks you to look at two different firms with two different marginal benefit curves. I'm going to go through one of them. And that should help you really well understand the second marginal benefit curve because the analysis is the same. The math you're going to find is super, super simple um, and it should be really straightforward. So let's get after it. So the problem states uh, that there are two polluting factories surrounded by identical residential neighborhoods and there are marginal damage curves given by the two neighborhoods and get my pens out here. Um, and the marginal damage curves are the same for both firms. The marginal damage curves are just uh, marginal damage equal to the level of pollution. And so it's basically a one-to-one -one positive relationship. Cool? Um, and so that's true for firm one and firm two. I'm going to just do firm one, but you'll see how you can get how to do firm two very easily from this. So uh, we also have and you want to remember that P is the level of pollution, and so every level of pollution creates some marginal damage to the community around that factory. Uh, there's also the marginal benefit curve, and the marginal benefit curve is just the marginal benefit associated with the level of pollution that the firm engages in. Um, and the idea here is that the pollution abatement, limiting pollution, comes at a cost. And so there's a benefit to not incurring that cost. And so when we think about the marginal benefit of firm one's pollution, we don't want to think about how, like, it's not this idea that pollution is beneficial intrinsically. It's this idea that the firm benefits from not having to pay for pollution reduction. And so for firm one, the marginal benefit of pollution is 8 minus P. So that means that for whatever level of pollution, um, they have the benefit is 8 minus that level of pollution. And we can think of this as being uh, cubic feet of sulfur dioxide or whatever, or particulate matter or some measure um, that's not really well defined, but we can think about it sort of theoretically. Um, and so we've got a couple of caveats in the problem where the book says the marginal benefit curves um, both become zero when they hit the horizontal axis. And so what we want to do is illustrate the curves for the neighborhoods, identify the pollution levels chosen by the firm in, without government intervention, and find the level of social surplus achieved. Ooh. And then what we'll do is we'll go through and find the socially optimal level of pollution. So if we're looking for the level of pollution that the firm would engage in without any government regulation, that's that P bar. And P bar is going to be um, the point at which marginal benefit is equal to zero. So if you remember, there it is. If you remember the sort of loose form of the model is that there is this marginal benefit curve and at the point where the marginal benefit curve hits the axis, that's our P bar. That's the maximum level of pollution that they can achieve if there's no regulations at all. And then every reduction in pollution comes at some cost and that's what's given by the marginal benefit curve. So let's calculate it and then graph it. Yay, dry erase markers. So P bar is going to be given by setting marginal benefit equal to zero. So we've got zero equals eight minus P. And then we can add P to both sides and we get P equals eight. Oh my gosh, P bar is eight. Pretty straightforward, right? Pretty easy math. So we can go ahead and graph that. So I'm gonna put my axes up where I've got pollution level on my x-axis and cost and benefit measured in dollars on my y-axis. And my curve is gonna go from 
my marginal benefit curve, which is a function of the pollution level. And then I'm going to have my marginal damage curve is going to be out of the origin with a slope of positive 1. And that's going to be the marginal damage at a given pollution level for society. And then I can go in and label this out and say, okay, well, this is P bar, which is eight units of pollution. Up here, if I set P equal to zero, then the marginal benefit of polluting at that point is eight, maybe eight, $8 million or $800,000, something like that. So that gives me my first problem. That's part A. Um, the next thing you want to do is find the social surplus achieved in this case. And what we're asking for here is to look at the marginal damage and the marginal surplus that society experiences. So what we want to do is basically find how well off society is in this case. And I'm going to need more colors to do that um, based on the marginal damage and marginal benefits curves we have. And so what we want to do is calculate the area of this triangle here, which is the benefit to society of the firm reducing cost, and the area of this triangle here, which is the cost society of the damage incurred by the firm. Do they look the same? It's because they are, but let's calculate it anyway. Okay, so let me get another dry erase board here. Oh, that was too close to the camera for my tastes. Okay, so the marginal damage curve is gonna give us the cost of polluting at P bar equal to eight. And so it's gonna be the area of that triangle, right? A triangle that has a base from zero to eight and a height from zero to eight. So area of a triangle is one half base times height, one half of eight times eight is gonna be, get out my handy dandy calculator. The fun fact is it kind of doesn't matter because again, those triangles are gonna be the same size, but we'll have to do this again a different way. So we may as well. So eight times eight is 64, which means the total marginal damage to society is 32. The marginal benefit is the savings for the firm, which is also part of society, of polluting at P bar equal to eight. And that's really what we're saying here. We're saying, hey, polluting at P bar comes at a cost and also has a benefit. So it's gonna have that same area of eight by eight because we're still looking at a triangle that goes from zero to eight with a height of zero to eight right? That's why the triangles are the same size. So um, one half of eight times eight is one half of 64 is 32. And so the net benefit for society is going to be the benefit minus the cost or the total social welfare, zero donut. There is no social benefit, right? or they cancel each other out, right? All of the marginal benefit to the firm is canceled out by the damage to those households. So let's see if we can solve things, make things better. So the next thing we wanna do, I'm gonna kinda of redraw my graph here, is we want to find, and this is part B, find the socially optimal level of pollution um, in the neighborhoods and Again, in the book problem, you're going to be doing this for two different neighborhoods. And so you'll want to be able and ready to talk about why the two neighborhoods have different um, socially optimal levels of pollutions or P stars. And really the answer is just that one firm is cleaner than the other. They have different marginal benefit curves. And so that's going to change the equilibrium. 
And that's what, like what we talked about when we talked about uh, a common pollution standard. We're saying, hey, if there's two different kinds of firms, if there's different kinds of firms, then there are going to be different um, socially optimal outcomes because each firm's going to have a different marginal benefit curve uh, associated with a different cost for pollution abatement. So we've already got p-bar, right? We found our p-bar and we used to be solved for it by setting marginal benefit to zero and finding that maximum level of pollution. Now we want to find p-star for this firm. And p-star is going to be where marginal damage for firm one is equal to marginal benefit for firm one, right? That's that equilibrium. So let's set those two crazy curves equal to each other. And that should be pretty easy, right? Marginal damage is just P. Marginal benefit is eight minus P. Oh, that's a nine. Eight minus P. So I'm gonna subtract P, or sorry, add P to both sides and I'm gonna get 2p equals 8, and then divide both sides by 2, and get p star is equal to 4. See? I told you the math was easy on this one, right? It's pretty straightforward. So that means that our p star down here is actually 4. Make sense? Hopefully. It makes sense, right? It, 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 it visually makes sense, it mathematically makes sense. And so the optimal level of pollution for society is P equal to four. So now that we know what the P star is, we wanna find the social welfare um, at that new pollution standard. So if we reduce to P star, how does that affect social welfare, okay? So let's go back to this very dirty dry erase board and calculate those triangles now. And so now what we're calculating, if I bring this back in real quick, is the social welfare associated with producing at P4. So now we're going to have a marginal damage that is just, I'll keep it the same color, this little pink triangle with a base of four and a height of four. And the marginal benefit of polluting for the firm is going to be based on this trapezoid here. And the easiest way to calculate that is probably two triangles, right? A triangle with a base of eight and a height of four, and then the triangle with the base of four and the height of four. Does that kind of make sense? So you could calculate the area of this trapezoid, or you could just divide it into two triangles and find the area of this triangle and this triangle. But you can already see how it's gonna work out, right? The benefit is these two triangles in teal, and the cost is this one triangle that's the same size. So there's gonna be a net benefit to society of reducing that pollution. And it's the parallel case because that's what we talked about when we talked about it in class. We said, hey, if we reduce pollution to the P star level, it's going to come at a cost to the firm of reduction and a benefit to society of reduction. And so this kind of gets transferred from the firm to society. And then this this triangle is the net gain. It's the same over here because it's a parallel case. That's the net gain to society. Hopefully that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, let me know because um, it's important for understanding this. So uh, let's calculate the uh, remaining marginal damage to society. So that's that marginal damage, which is a triangle with a base four and a height of four. Four times four is 16. One half times 16 is eight. So that's the marginal damage caused um, by P star level of pollution. And then the benefit is the marginal benefit that the firm gets. So 
we've got the marginal benefit of that first triangle, which is the big triangle, which has a base of 8 and a height of 4. So that's 8 times 4, which is going to be 1 half of 8 times 4 is 16. And then the second triangle is the marginal benefit of that second little baby triangle. Same size as this one, 1 half uh, 4 times 4 which is 8, and so we have a net effect. These two small triangles cancel each other out, and so we have uh, the total social benefit for this one firm polluting at P star is going to be 16 plus 8 minus 8. That doesn't quite show up, but you get what I'm saying, right? So we get the benefit to society of $16 saved by the firm plus $8 saved by the firm minus $8 of cost to the people who have to endure the pollution damage. Um, so that gives us a net benefit, a net social benefit of $16, $16,000, 16 units of utility, whatever. The idea is we have a net benefit. Society is made better off by achieving that pollution standard, that P star. Um, and then the rest of the problem asks you to compare the two firms. So I went through and looked at the marginal benefit of firm A or firm 1 that has the marginal benefit curve of 8 minus P. The second firm is a cleaner firm. Their marginal benefit curve is given by MB equal to 4 minus P. So they're going to have a smaller P star and they're going to have a lower level of P bar. And so basically then what you want to do is find the total social benefit of both firm A and firm B. And so it's going to be similar to how we did it for firm A here. But you're going to do the same thing for firm B and sum them. And then the book asks you to consider a common pollution standard. And this is what we talked about in class, right? There's huge information costs associated with calculating these marginal benefit and marginal damage curves. And if there's multiple firms, like two different firms, that's going to increase those information costs. A common pollution standard is going to lower the information costs and lower the enforcement costs. And so if we set P star to 3 for both firm A and for B, firm B, then what would be the social damage? What would be the social benefit? How would it be different? What would the different outcome be? And is it better or worse than no pollution standard? And what we're going to find is that the common standard is a little bit worse than having individual P stars for every firm, but it's still better than no regulation. And that's kind of the point here is that all of these choices, all of these ways to get to the socially optimal level of pollution do come at a cost. In the case of finding the optimal level of pollution for every firm, there are huge information costs. Um, and so we might want to find another option. And that's why we talked about a Cosian solution, right? Where we could have bargaining, private bargaining, solve the problem without the public government coming in and setting those standards. And that might come at a lower cost if we can have costless bargaining. That's a pretty big if, right? Um, but the last option we discussed is sort of one of the favorites of economists, the cap and trade. And that basically says, well, what if we just pick a pollution standard, a common pollution standard, and then let people decide, let firms decide if they'd rather reduce their pollution you know, at that marginal benefit cost, right, that pollution abatement cost, or buy the permission to pollute on the market. And then we create a market, we create a system where people's preferences, where those firms' marginal benefits are revealed, and that's going to um, generate government revenue. It's going to take a lot of the information costs out of the game um, and still give us a reduction. And that's why economists are so fond of cap and trade. So let me know what you think. Let me know what questions you have about this. Um, I'll pop that homework up there in just a little bit. And then also let me know what other models would you like to see some more of? Um, what models would you like me to go over? I'm happy to do it. Have a great rest of the day. Take care and I'll see you next time.